Greetings YouTube. I have a policy generally when it comes to doing videos over rumors in the community. This is not things that are officially on the forums or in our in-game inbox and that's to not cover them, especially if another YouTuber has broken them. But every once in a while there's a story that comes up that's so important and so crazy and so dare I say scandalous that it warrants an exception. And so uh, I want to say like I have the utmost respect for Rich the Man, uh, who's a great dude in every interaction we've ever had with him. And his channel, his purpose is to cover all of the news everywhere. And so, you know, when he does it, it makes perfect sense. But I kind of would rather stick to crystal opening commentaries and discussing uh, things in the game that have happened to everybody than this kind of thing. But when KT1 broke the news very recently, and I... Uh, would encourage everybody to go to his channel and watch the original video, which I will also link in the uh, description box of this video, uh, if YouTube lets me. Sometimes they flag links, but I'm going to try. Uh, it's a truly crazy story that, to KT1's full credit, I asked him if I could do a follow-up video. He was very gracious and understanding. Not only gave me uh, the green light to do it, but also sent me some follow-up screenshots, some of which he wasn't even able to cover in his video because he received them after his video was published. So if you missed his video, and hopefully you pause this video and you go watch his video and then you come back, because this is a follow-up, this is not breaking news, his video was breaking news. You'll know that the Russians are allegedly doing to MCOC what uh, <laughs> the United States uh, intelligence said that they did to our uh, elections in 2016. And that's that they have hacked Kabam's servers. And so I had to wrap my mind around this because when you look at some of these screenshots of what these Russian hackers are offering, and when I say Russian hackers, it blows my mind that I'm discussing Russian hacking in a mobile game. But what they're doing is something that is so unbelievable to me as a novice of understanding how any kind of hacking works and coding. What they're doing is they're basically hacking into what the Kabam employees, what the people at the top of Kabam's uh, game, I guess you could say marketing is, and apparently I'm allergic to that because <coughs> I just sneezed. Uh, but um, these are the people who are in charge of sending you in-game inbox messages. And specifically, sending you messages when you receive, say, a compensation package or when you receive a special gift. This is coming straight from Kabam. This is not coming from some third-party, uh, I guess, middleman that tries to sneak it past Kabam servers only for them to flag it. Because my first question to KT was, how can they do this and not get caught? Because Kabam servers are so advanced, especially compared to what they used to be, that if somebody used all of those shady, like back in the day, I don't even know if they're still being um, shown as possible, but like they would suddenly have somebody have a million units or a million gold or a million revives, whatever. The Kabam servers would catch it and they would immediately ban that account, uh, assumingly forever. But this is different, because when the Russian hackers, which again, I know I, I've said this already, but it's just hard for me to say that phrase in a game. If I'm talking about a federal political election, okay, the stakes seem to be something that makes sense. When you're talking about this, it's just, it's, it's huge, and it's kind of unbelievable, and yet these screenshots are what they are. Um, what this screenshot that you're looking at now I've been told in Russian is, and you can see the NYCC at the end. That's the only thing I can tell. This is assuming to be what maybe the top prizes are going to be or were planned to be at the 2020 New York City Comic Con event for MCOC. Now, of course, that event, while still going on virtually, has taken a huge uh, turn of events given the pandemic as they will not be physically attending a Comic Con that were pretty sure, right, is already canceled officially. So yeah, uh, not happening. Not during a pandemic. It's like the exact opposite of what you want to gather thousands of strangers together in a small indoor facility. But uh, because of this, 
they're giving what I've been told is very reasonable and low prices for them to essentially hack into the server as Kabam and then send people's accounts in-game inbox messages with such incredible items that you can get anything from revives and potions to tier 2 alphas and tier 5 basic catalysts to 5 star and 6 star crystals to units to a 6 star guillotine 2099 who was the top prize I believe last year in 2019 for the same event but the thing that blows my mind the most and this is something that kabam you've got to be working overtime to figure out how to detect this because kabam has been worried that People who were able to spam and uh, just spam, I should say, the treasures of it that got one week bans for the five star awakening gems and the six star shards, which, to be completely fair, is a huge unfair advantage. They're worried that that would create a uh, imbalance in the competition of the game. I agree, but if you're saying that those people deserve a one week ban because they got ten five star awakening gems. How are you supposed to treat the people who are getting six-star and five-star generic awakening gems? You know, the six-star awakening gem that's only possible if you 100% fully explore the abyss, the hardest difficulty in the game, although I guess, you know, technically it's probably not. But certainly the thing that takes the most time, you're going to have people just, just get that? They've got to figure out how they can detect this because it is destroying the uh, credibility and as they always like to say the economy of the game yeah this thing it just nukes it it nukes it when you can give any summoner who's willing to send you some bucks the highest especially the six star generic awakening gem i mean that thing kabam probably values it and i kid you not at multiple thousands of dollars that's what they're hoping that summoners have to spend worth of units not to say that you can't 100 percent explore the abyss on a free-to-play account you just need to hoard a lot of revives and a lot of units so i don't know how kabam's going to handle this i do know that in all of the time that i have been covering mcoc stories for youtube which is now over three years i've never seen something that is such a threat to players that don't cheat because this is giving players through Kabam's own server and therefore through Kabam's own accounts. I mean, these are in-game messages showing up, not from some shady hacker in Russia, but from Kabam themselves as if you won the prize at New York City Comic Con. Uh, I don't know how they're going to detect it, but they've got to figure that out because the credibility of the game, the credibility of everybody who plays fairly, uh, hangs in the balance of whether or not they're able to figure it out. And I just want to say, even if you know right now watching this that Kabam is having a hard time detecting it, I promise you they are working overtime right now to try to figure out how to stop it. And once they figure it out, your account just won't be temporarily banned. It will be permanently banned. So as tempting as it is to hit up some hacker to get a six-star generic awakening gem or a six-star crystal or whatever, uh, what we've seen time and time again, and we saw it this past week, is that if you try to do a short-term gain for your account, it will end up for a long-term loss. In this past week, it was a loss of a one week. But in this case, I think it, it's probably going to be just a straight lifetime ban. Because Kabam has to put their hammer down. This is like the steroid scandal of baseball. you got to be able to do something and, and in that analogy they just do like 100 days no in this case it's just got to be a lifetime ban first offense because you've got to do everything you can to have a historic precedent of if if you try this again we have a, a zero uh, acceptance of the policy it's just it's so fascinating because you know why technically this is not against the terms of service because kabam has not invented a world or even um hypothesized a world where somebody would hack their own servers, pretend to be them, use their coding to deliver in-game account gifts. I mean, this is truly like Edward Snowden level insanity. And yet, 
it's happening from everything that we've seen so far from these screenshots. So thank you again to KT1 for providing this breaking news. Thank you for being so understanding to not only have me do a follow-up story on this, but also to send me the screenshots to give some visuals as I'm talking about this. Um, needless to say, this is not the last chapter of the story, and he will update us, and hopefully I'll be able to update as well. But uh, the bottom line, if I'm working for Kabam, all of the sirens are going off at Kabam headquarters today. I don't care that it's a holiday, at least in the United States. And they've got to realize this is the most serious problem to ever face their company. And if they don't figure out how to detect it, they're going to face a huge backlash from people who are gaining multi-thousands of dollars worth of items at pennies on the dollar using their own software. You truly don't know what you're going to see when you wake up and you report on this game. And today, well, is no historic exception.